um, the puzzle, well actually it's, it's sort of a play of words, I, I'm sometimes a bit puzzled about all this technology enhanced learning, what we do in research, and then what I get back when I talk to people, that's actually why I put something together. Um, I'm at DCU, but that's not so important. So why did I ask? Uh, I recently went to a fair, learn tech in Germany, and talked to a lot of people, I talked to people around me, students, and there's this Generation X and Y, I'm Generation X, so I shouldn't be familiar with technology, here I am. Uh, hi, Mr. Messi. And then the knowledge economy skills, everybody's talking about uh, all that, these topics. Um, what is this? It's a very short case study. It's for me personally a 2010 update because I've done research now for the almost last five years. Also a reality check and a reminder, I think maybe for all of us, it is not a representative study, so I didn't apply all the uh, things you do to a decent and uh, perfect study. It's not part of a funded research, although I'm working on something like that. Who did I talk to? I did talk to 15 people, um, interviews, and I specifically picked people who might use it for their work to train. So I talked to a number of uh, well, manager directors, someone who leads an SME, um, people in, in workshops, etc. cetera, here my time goes off. <laughs> uh, and oh yeah, secondary school teacher, you get the idea, just a mix of people, not just one area. Yeah, now we can move on. <laughs> um, and I just asked in this semi-structured interview, what do you think is te technology enhanced learning? What do you think is the three most uh, important topics and pitfalls? I looked at research that has been done, and my the review comments also mentioned, why don't you look at that web 2.0? Well, here question to you, what do you think is technology enhanced learning? Please shout. <laughs> Serious. Mobile learning. Sorry? Mobile learning. Okay. Google. Okay. YouTube videos. YouTube videos, okay. What else? The pencil. Student center. Okay. <coughs> there. That's what I got back. I was a bit disappointed. Or maybe it's just this, you know, reality check. For most of the people, if not all of them, it's learning the computer, learning with the CD, uh, doing something on the internet. Because they all look for information for their jobs. A lot of them said simulations. Uh, they read text on web pages, make, meaning they went to, to informational websites. Uh, they download and upload material to the system, Moodle, Web City, whatever it might be. Vocabulary quizzes and matching, downloading, teaching material. Now you see that's very, very limited. And I don't think we have any doubles with what you just said, right? But that's what people think e technology enhanced learning is. That's what, what it is for them. So the top three pitfalls, what do you think? What stops people from using it, or, not, or why do the problems? Mobile oh, learning. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not the answer. Student <laughs> center. <laughs> Student center. <laughs> they don't want it. Okay. Failure of technology. Okay. Yeah. Cost. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Time. 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 So that's what I got back. It's too complicated. Now that is really usability. It's I don't know where I am. I don't know where to go. What to do figure out how to do things. Then it's too boring. What they basically mm -hmm. meant, some, you have a lot of these, if you click continue, continue, you could easily read a book as well. right? You still have that. And actually at LearnTech at the fair, the most successful learning company, e-learning companies, sell that. Okay. So I know where, that, where these people got it from. It's very repetitive and predictive. Of course, once you've read the first 50 pages, you know what the next 60 is going to look like. And it's often too much fiddling around. It's not a real challenge. I got that back, I think, because it was mostly small companies. And a lot of e-learning actually doesn't target small companies. Now, I, I got that as a result uh, three years ago in my Delphi study for my master's. Seems it hasn't changed. Uh, the computer is never big enough. The programs <laughs> grow. We <Get> got back. It's <laughs> not such a fast screen. Um, it's too much at once, too long. That was another thing. What Messi also just said, 10 minutes. That's a good unit. But most of these programs are much longer. It's separate from other IT. I think that is changing a little bit. But you send messages or something, then it's not your email account. Or, you know, you have different ways of communication. You use something all day, and then all of a sudden you go into your learning space, and you're cut off from the rest of them. But relevant for the work, I guess that, as I said, has to do with the uh, company sizes. Who are we actually uh, developing materials? So, what are the potentials? What do you think? Over there. <laughs> you are a bit repetitive. <laughs> <laughs> you 
Reusable. Okay. Reusable cost. Reusable mm -hmm. cost again. Okay. Just in time. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Okay. Sure. Well. Yeah. Well, yeah, but that's also that's not new. Access to a lot of materials, learning at my own pace, 24/7. Um, it adds something to face-to-face -face training, so with blended learning, and it's something different. Someone actually said that, right? Um, what also came up? Nobody mentioned Web2O or any of the tools that are classically mentioned as Web2O tools. Now that was not 20 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, there were no digital natives, and that is not a matter of age. You know, there were uh, of the last four or five years, you might have the same experience. There are 15 year olds who are very good at all these things, and 15 year olds who totally fail to do anything but sending an email or chat, right? Um, so I was wondering, are we racing ahead, or losing a bit of touch with our learners, right? Now I looked at a, to compare that because it's not very representative, I looked at a very recent study just published in November in Italy. <coughs> they looked, I think they, they talked to 85 um, HR people who are responsible for learning. Um, so they mainly target large companies with more than 1,000 employees. Their e-learning is for trainees or for job, job return, <laughs> people who turn into a job. Um, SMEs are not a, a target group. Uh, they still use a lot of traditional e-learning, uh, like web-based trainings or blended learning, and they do that because that's a commercial, commercially successful way to sell e-learning. Uh, which we just saw there is a, is a gap in there all, with all that. Um, there are trends. We had that. Someone complained. Repetitively said mobile learning, right? It's in here. User content production. This is a smart board. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stop touching it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a not so e learning. Oh, that's one of the trends. Uh, okay, stay away from this thing now. Um, game based learning and simulations. Mobile learning, user content. But with the games, they clearly mean not simulations necessarily. Because at the moment, a lot of what is called game based learning is really either simulations. Or it's computer games that try to imitate real computer games. I think Matthew was actually good, good summary for my presentation. He said we have to find ways to actually create games that have the benefits of the games from the gaming community, but also include the learning somehow. Right? So my conclusions. <laughs> um, I thought it was very, for me, it was very helpful just to sort of get this reality check. But with all our wonderful uh, research we do on, I mean, I love all the research and I'm very enthusiastic about it, but I think we always have to, <coughs> especially when we are mainly in, in research, look at the people in front of us, okay? Uh, we cannot be too slow that we don't do any more progression, but we also have to keep in mind who is there in front of us. We cannot categorize people. Okay? This uh, Generation X and digital native thing doesn't work. We have to look at what does this person right in front of us really uh, bring into that into that space? Um, yeah, so that's, for me, that was a good feedback for my topic. That's where I do my PhD research, user experience in e-learning, because we ignore all these topics. Forget about user experience. You can optimize as long as you like. You have really have to look at who is in front of that computer, who's interacting with this. Thanks.